Today, I'm reacting to Brad Pitt's Watch Collection. What's your favorite Brad Pitt movie? Um, no. Um, Snatch, great movie. No, no, he looks like a fat f***er. Well, he's a fat f***er. I know he was in the Oceans movies. Try to your mom for me. Really, really good. I know who he f Angelina Jolie, like Lara Croft. When I was younger and Windows 95 was a thing, he had a game called Lara Croft. It was very big pixels, but it was also me very horny. So I really had feelings for Lara Croft. So indirect, I had feelings for Angelina Jolie because Lara Croft became so popular that it became a movie with Angelina Jolie. So indirect, I was trying to hit on Brad Pitt's girlfriend, wife, fiance, and now X. Oh, they adapt a lot of kids, don't they? Yeah, they're f***ing legends. Wow, my favorite watch brand of all time. Elon and Sona, so nice. I've had so much hate from all these f***ing Lange and Sona fan boys. Lange and Sona, I'm not feeling it. Would I buy it? No. Man can't have an opinion because the Lange fan boys, they come out of their holes with their f***ing and German rifles. My opinion hasn't changed about Long A. I mean, I'm not saying that Long A is shit. Let's be completely honest. They make one of the most incredible movements ever. For example, this caliber, caliber L141.1, one of the most incredible finished calibers ever. It's a fing world timer. Unbelievable. I don't hate Long A. I just don't feel it. What you see here is an A Long A and Cern 1. Time zone. And the reason it's called time zone is because you can hmm, read multiple time zones. The watch Brad Pitt has is 42 millimeter big, solid rose gold case, value between 65 and $70,000. And um, yeah, I would have bought something else for that money. But it's lovely. It's all right. That photo is the reason why I loved Daytonas. That photo. When Brad Pitt was younger, he was wearing a white Dell Daytona. Absolutely insane. Loved it. Reference number 116520. So the previous generation of the white Dell Daytona. It looks the f***ing dog's bollocks. He's pretty damn cool. Like, no homo, but I would have done him like. I, like, I very much like vagina, so no homo here. But I would have like... <laughs> I love vaginas. Absolute cracker of a watch. Six months ago, you were able to pick up a nice full set of this between $23,000 and $25,000. Today, you're gonna pay for that same set between $29,000 and $31,000. That is sexy. The watch. I have seen where I have I have seen wearing him. Is this we, a random word generator? <laughs> <laughs> this is me at nine in the morning. So there you go. This is actually a cool watch. Something that I. <laughs> me mate this is that watch that people buy to be different i think it's class and of course brad pitt makes it look cool and this is cartier's first ever jump hour watch introduced in 1928 rare the holy grail to a lot of watch collectors the holy grail for many many people personally i think it's absolutely insane that he has one the unfortunate thing is uh, first of all i wouldn't be able to afford it second of all i wouldn't be able to wear it and because this would look a bit weird on me personally. It's literally impossible to value. There's none for sale today. What Brad Pitt is wearing here is the Rolex GMT Master 2, reference number 116718, a solid yellow gold GMT. Something I absolutely do not understand. Rolex has discontinued this particular watch. F me, it's unreal. You can pick up a nice set of this Rolex GMT between thirty-seven and forty-two thousand dollars. I have so many questions on this photo, mate. What are these sunglasses? It looks like a kid that comes out of Disney World. The second thing I see is the watch. The watch is a Patek Philippe 5205R. I believe that this watch was only produced in two types of metal. In G, white gold, and the R, in rose gold, the one you see here. The watch features a complication called the annual calendar. And the annual calendar is a calendar that is accurate for 364 days a year. What about the last day? You have to change it one day a year. An annual calendar displays the day, the date, the month, and the time. The difference between a perpetual calendar and an annual calendar is, is that a perpetual calendar would display the day, the day, the date, the day, the day, the day, the day, the day, the day, date, month, year, leap year, yes, no. You only set the perpetual calendar once and it will be accurate for 600 million years except the year 2100. You know why? 
2100 will be a problem for perpetual calendars. The year 2100 is a leap year, but it's not counted as a leap year. So mechanically, a watch is struggling to cope with that. So basically all the perpetual calendar watches, mechanical perpetual calendar watches, are accurate till the year 2100. If you really like that watch, you can pick that watch up between 50 and $60,000. You can actually pick up this watch cheaper than the recommended retail price because it's not in massive demand. Let me go for a pee. Ugh. I was going for a shit earlier, so you're lucky. Brad Pitt always needs something special. The discontinued Rolex Day Day 2 and Rose Gold reference number 218235 with the in brown wing style. 41 millimeter solid rose gold with a presidential bracelet. This is unbelievable. Very, very, very rare. Barely see one on the market. And when I see one, they're not being sold for less than $50,000. Watch is nearly as special as mine. What are you wearing? I'm wearing the 42 millimeter Rolex Explorer 2 with a black dial and the orange hand. You know what? I'm gonna put this watch up for sale as the cheapest one in Europe, period. Not sure how much yet, but there will be a link in the description. That's cool. That's a vintage Datejust. Now, now vintage, like, I mean, Brad Pitt is vintage as well. This is the Rolex Datejust, reference number 16234. 36 millimeter Datejust in full steel with a Jubilee bracelet. The only thing that is white gold is the bezel, and it already featured the sapphire glass. Roman numeral dial, f***ing cracker. Today's value of that watch, depending on the set, is between five and six thousand dollars. I think this is super class and I really, really hope he still has this watch. The watch you see here is a Bretling Premier. I like the shape, 43 millimeter in diameter. I like it. I just wish they were a little bit smaller, to be honest. Brad Pitt is a brand ambassador. Do you think he's wearing Bretlings because he loves them or because there's a brand deal in place? I see a Bretling comeback and I am happy about that. Brad Pitt joining the forces. This is the Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711, the most desirable sports watch on the market today. Blows Daytona out of the door, blows AP out of the door. I am sure to say that Brad Pitt is a god tier collection. Like, this watch goes nearly four times retail. Watch is worth between $100,000 and $120,000 today. That's no dog shit. I completely forgot about this. This is that um, um, Hollywood movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is the Citizen Bullhead. There was a whole story about this within the watch community. The movie was supposed to be set in 1969. The watch that he's wearing dates back out of the early 70s, 1970, 1972, so quite funny. There was a period in the early 2000s where people were wearing watches over a leather cover. Did you ever wear one? Yes. You did? Yes. Do you have a photo? Yes, probably, but I don't want to share that. It looks horrible. Just keep it like this on a normal strap. Done. I forget everything about Brad Pitt. Like, this is the Patek Philippe 5016. This is a very complicated watch. A perpetual calendar, a tourbillon, a minute repeater. This is what we call a grand complication. Supposedly, he paid five million pounds for this, which is about six, seven million dollars on a charity auction. But he has never worn that watch. I wasn't at that auction, so I can't confirm. There have been articles floating about, there have been rumors floating about, but I have never, ever seen Brad Pitt wearing that watch. And until that moment, I'm not gonna confirm that he owns a 5016, because that watch is special. You know that the scan only has 10 calories. So basically, I could drink 250 cans and then reach my daily um, amount of calories I'm allowed.